Dee Gordon's emotional home run for Jose Fernandez deserves a deep rewind. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Damo. I'm Nick. So today we've got another secret base, like Damo says. Um, really enjoy the channel. Um, if, you, if you've if you not seen any secret base before, go and check out his channel. He's a brilliant content creator. Um, yeah, this well, they are. Yeah, there's multiple of them. But, oh, of course they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one was heavily requested on our Discord. It's also been coming up down in the comments as well. We don't actually know why this is emotional, mm. but... Yeah, looking That's forward. Looking forward to seeing what the backstory of it is, and it sounds like it's going to be quite a moment. So, yeah. we hope you enjoy. It's September twenty sixth, two thousand sixteen. Oh, recent. We're at Marlins Park in Miami, Florida, with Bartolo Colon pitching for the Mets in the bottom of the first. With no runs on the board, the Marlins leadoff hitter D Gordon waits for the two zero pitch. Look, I know on paper the stakes are low. There's no championship up for grabs. We're only three outs into the game. But this next pitch will become part of a moment so much more impactful than even a World Series would be for Miami. To appreciate something that's bigger than just one game or sports in general, we need to rewind. Gordon is about to have one of the most memorable at-bats of his career. But it's coming during a season that he'd probably rather look past not because of anything he did or didn't do on the field, more so because of the fact that he couldn't be on the field for much of 2016. In April, he received an 80-game suspension, which was a big blow to a Marlins team that managed just 71 wins a year before with Gordon playing in 145 games. And by playing, I mean he dominated. It took him just 28 games to record his 50th hit, and by season's end, he led the National League in hits, batting average, and stolen bases, which all paired nicely with his first Gold Glove award. Doing so in his first season in Miami, he was part of a core making the Marlins fun, or at least watchable again. What Gordon lacked in power, he more than made up for in speed, which he showed off on June 30th, 2015 against the Giants when he legged out an inside the park home run. This was his first homer of the wow. season, and one of just eight that he would have in his five-year career entering. Wow, so only eight home runs in his five-year career entering this moment. Um, I was just gonna say, do you know, I've never seen an inside the park home run. I'm no. still waiting. Yeah. I could just watch a video, obviously, but I'm waiting. I keep watching games live. Green 2016. Want that, watch it again. He didn't add to that total in the first 21 games of the season yeah, before getting suspended, nor has he in the 53 since his return. And while his numbers have slipped from the year before, considering he was otherworldly in 2015, Gordon's doing just fine. He showed very little rest from the 80 games off. The trouble is, with or without Gordon, the Marlins are all but mathematically eliminated from the postseason for the 13th straight season. Yeah, It'll even be a struggle to finish 500. And considering who they're facing tonight, it will be just a bit tougher. Partially because Cologne is famously big and even more famously sexy, which can cause a distraction. But also, uh, he's a good pitcher. Context, please. <laughs> I don't understand that. Maybe his nickname's Big Sexy. Yeah, I was wondering if it's going to be something like that. <laughs> and with the start tonight, he and the Mets have a bit more to play for as they look to lock up a wild card spot for their first postseason appearance since last year. If they can, it'll be New York's first back-to-back -back playoffs since the 99 and 2000 seasons, which was all the way back when Cologne was a sweet, starry-eyed 27-year-old. That was seven teams, one 50-game suspension for PEDs, and just a couple LBs ago for the pitcher. Much like Gordon, Cologne came out of his 2012 suspension looking fresh. He finished the year with the second most wins in the AL and led the league in complete game that shutouts. Right. Yeah, that earned nice. him a nice contract from the Mets, which Cologne repaid by recording his most strikeouts since his Cy Young winning 2005 season. And before tonight, in 2016 he had been pretty solid, <laughs> especially crazy. over his last 10 games when the Mets needed it the most. And they needed it tonight. They're facing a Marlins team that's playing for so much more than whatever fleeting postseason hopes exist. And regardless of which side is pitching, Miami would have a presence on the mound. That number 16 wasn't going anywhere, especially not from the hearts and minds of Marlins players, coaches, or fans. 
Miami's star, the young ace Jose Fernandez, oh, wow. was found dead oh, less than two days earlier after a boat he was in crashed into a jetty. This devastated his teammates, their entire city, and the league as a whole. No one wanted to believe his story would end like this. He arrived in the U.S. as a 15-year-old after his fourth attempt to defect from Cuba. On the journey over, he dove into the water to save a woman who had fallen in, which turned out to be his mother. After settling wow. in Tampa, he won a pair of high school state titles and drew the eyes of Marlins management who selected him 14th overall in the 2011 draft. He struck out eight over five innings in his debut on April 7, 2013 against the Mets, and while a New York comeback in the ninth spoiled his result, he'd go on to earn NL Rookie of the Year honors and finish third in Cy Young voting. In addition to that, wow. in his final game of the season, he crushed a ball that went out for his first career home run against Atlanta. <laughs> and it also led to the bench's clearing once he made it home after Atlanta disapproved of him spitting his way around third and taking a little too long to look at the ball. When it came to his pitching, some argued it was the greatest season by a rookie in MLB history. So to no one's surprise, Fernandez got the nod to be the Marlins opening day starter in his second season, making him the youngest to do that in the NL since Dwight Gooden in 1986. And although his season came to an end in May, oh. he returned halfway through 2015, looking like the ace the Marlins needed. Tommy John surgery, so young as well. Is that common to have? Yeah, I know To have it that early in... Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Yeah. That carried into this season for Fernandez, which included an unbeaten May, part of eight straight starts that ended with him earning the win. Wow. In his final outing against the division-leading Nationals, he struck out 12 across eight scoreless innings, and afterward told a teammate that he felt it was the best game he'd ever pitched. But when he passed away, it wasn't tragic because he was a great pitcher. It devastated the communities because he was loved as a person. Tonight at Marlins Park, you could see that in the stands and around the stadium with memorials popping up as they had throughout all of Miami. And you could also see it on every Marlins player, physically in the fact that they all wore his jersey in tribute, but also in the emotions openly on display for the last 36 hours. The Marlins canceled their game on the day of Fernandez's death, and many took the time to open up about the 24-year-old. The theme of their memories was the joy he would brought to and took from baseball. Marlins manager Don Mattingly likened him to how kids play the game, having never lost that early passion. Eduardo Perez said that all Fernandez wanted to do was have fun and be on that mound and play the game. Not work the game, but play the game. And he played it beautifully. Marlins president David Sampson, backed by the entire team, spoke at length about Jose and referenced the fact that they would make sure no one forgot the man that Fernandez was. His story is representative of a story of hope and of love and of faith, and no one will ever let that story die. Those who had grown up with him over the last few years expressed their love, their hurt, and how much they'd miss Fernandez's daily positivity. Gordon posted on his Instagram a sentiment shared by many teammates. They were family, and they'd lost a brother. Ahead of the opening pitch tonight, they quickly it's, it's crazy obviously it was taken so so young but it, it's mad how how much impact he had on so many people's lives before the age of 24 yeah, yeah i mean like, it looked like it sounded like what he was achieving was you know first especially for miami because yeah. they've been on the down for quite some time yeah, I mean, we've said all along that on this journey we want to just not only master the stats and numbers, which mm. I know you're excited about as much as me, but obviously the history of it as well. Yeah, and of course. Didn't know who Jose Fernandez was before this video. No. Um, but yeah, it's tragic that he yeah. was taken so soon. Yeah, awful, awful. But yeah, he's um, obviously such a well-loved young lad. Yeah. They surrounded the mound with number 16 for a moment of silence in the national anthem as Marlins players fought through tears. The Mets crossed the infield and both teams embraced following the anthem showing the impact felt by the entire league. Miami took to the mound as a team and left messages in the dirt for their pitcher, before taking their places as their first game without Jose began. But the tribute was far from over, and even the first pitch of this at-bat had purpose. 
D. Gordon has batted lefty his entire career, so where he's currently at, it makes sense. But when he came to the plate, he stepped into the opposite batter's box. Settling in as a righty, just like Jose, Gordon actually mimicked Fernandez's batting stance to a T, knee wiggle and all. Oh, wow. After taking ball one, he swapped out equipment. And I would guess that was Jose's helmet. And returned to his natural side where he took ball two. With less than two days separating this pitch from Fernandez's death, every emotion has filtered through these players, this organization and their fans. In and outside the stadium located in Little Havana, memorials grow honoring the man who loved baseball but openly loved life even more. And while the healing process needed more time, for today at least, they were back to just playing baseball. But Gordon, who has never been mistaken for a power hitter, has one more salute for his brother. Welcome to a moment in history. Gordon to right, it's deep, and it's gone! Wow. D Gordon has hit it out, and the Marlins have a one-nothing lead. Yeah, yeah sad, sad story. Yeah, I mean, got me that one. Yeah, tragedy. I mean, yeah, so young, so talented. Mm. Had, by the sounds of it, such a tough beginning to life as well. Yeah. And finally, was it fourth attempt at coming over to the to the USA? Yeah, it's, yeah, um, crazy. Yeah, no, quite, quite a sad moment. But yeah, as we say, as we if we want to master the sport in present and in past, and we're going to have to definitely learn things like this to to be able to do that and. Yeah, Absolutely. it was definitely some interesting bits in there, but yeah, tragic, tragic, and um, it seemed like a bittersweet moment for D. Gordon. Definitely, there. yeah. But that's, yeah, thank that's you. How he, that's how he would have wanted it to go, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, thank you very much for suggesting that one. Um, as I say, it's been Discord and in the comments heavily requested all over. Really, really appreciate it. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help us grow the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.